Hello! Mother Nintendo's laid another gaming egg! And it's the Nintendo Switch Lite, basically a handheld-only version of their weird hybrid console, the Switch, which you can play handheld or plug into a dock and then slide the old Joy-Cons off the side and play with it on your telly. But not this one, this one is handheld only. And it's grey, but it's also available in uh, turquoise and yellow. Uh, not, not together, they're two separate colours, turquoise and yellow. You wouldn't want something that's both turquoise and yellow, that would not be a treat for the eye. So yeah, the box is, well, what you'd expect from such things, basically. It's got a picture of a grubby mitt holding a switch light with some orbs on the screen. Look, it, it says you get the console and um, the power supply. Look, there's somebody holding it on the back. <gasps> They've printed it upside down! Oh wait. And yeah, loads of text. Walls of text! My god, Nintendo do like their text. Anyway, that's the box. Thank you, box. It's now time to look at the actual console, which is considerably more interesting. Whoa, here it goes. Right, let's turn it on. Then you can see the screen lit up, which is a bit more exciting. Blink, 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 blink. Look, I've been playing Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, mainly to test the D-pad. So yeah, um, first thing I'm going to mention is, before we continue, I have put a screen protector on this, because I'm always a bit paranoid of these very soft-feeling screens that these things come with. So I always stick one on first, so it doesn't get all scratched up and rubbish. I mean, they never get scratched anyway, but hey, paranoia. Um, yeah, you've got all the same controls as the almighty standard Switch, except, rather than the weird, weird four-way button controller thing instead of a D-pad, you have an actual D-pad. Gotta say, it's not a bad one either. Um, I, well, my test is always Street Fighter 2 Dragon Punch. That is the test for any joypad for me. And I tell you what, friends, it's actually worked pretty well. Um, yeah, I can pull the moves off quite easily, which is good, because... I'm not saying it's an amazing joypad or anything, but frankly, people do seem to have forgotten how to make the bloody things these days, so it's nice to get something half decent. Um, other changes, nothing major, really. You still got your micro SD slot, you still got your game card slot, and your headphones, and your volume, and your power, and all your buttons, exactly as one would expect. Um, it is, of course, smaller than a standard Switch. Look, you can see the difference with your eyes. Uh, the screen on the light is what? Uh, I've written it down so I don't forget. Five and a half inches versus 6.2 inches of the old one. So it's a little bit smaller. Still 720p, as you would expect. Um, yeah, I've got to say, actually, the display on the Switch Lite feels a bit better to me. Seems a little bit... I don't want to say clear, a little bit brighter, perhaps it's got better viewing angles as well. I think the screen is slightly better, but not enough that you would worry about it, if you know what I mean. This is about 25 grams lighter as well, um, which again isn't a massive difference, but it helps a little bit, doesn't it? Battery life is better. Um, I'm told that's due to the chips inside it rather than the battery, but I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so you get between, well, you get about half an hour more than the normal switch, which isn't great because battery life on the switch is not fantastic. So you get between three and seven hours on this, which is ugh, all right. I mean, in my experience, uh, depending on what I'm playing, I've got about four hours generally. So yeah, not amazing. Um, and this, yeah, so basically, screen's a bit smaller. Whole thing's a little bit lighter. Uh, screen is, yeah, slightly better. The D-pad better. Uh, the battery's very slightly better. Everything seems better, doesn't it? Isn't that wonderful? Well, not as simple as that, guys, because it does have cut-down features. As I said, this is handheld only, so you can't plug it into your telly. And the uh, USB-C port thingamajig on the bottom does not, I repeat, does not give TV out. So uh, you cannot display from this on your screen. Um, I never play my Switch uh, plugged into the television. I always play it handheld, but I do stream from it occasionally. So uh, that's not really feasible with these. And due to the fact that you can't slide the old controllers off the side. You've got no HD rumble. In fact, you've got no rumble at all. Um, the HD rumble being a sort of slightly more clever version of rumbling that the Joy Cons do on the standard Switch. So you know you you can play that game where you get how many ice cubes or a drink or whatever it was. Anyway, none of that, none of that at all, and no motion camera stuff because um, you know they don't slide off at the sides. It's still got the Joy. Uh, it's still got the joypad, it's still got the gyroscope, so you can still do your aiming in Breath of the Wild and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you want, you can still connect Joy-Cons up to it. So you can still play games 
um, you know, that need them. You just need to connect to them uh, externally. Uh, same thing for classic controllers and that. The problem is, of course, with no video out and no kickstand at all, you'd have to sort of lean it up against something. And frankly, the screen's a little bit small for be doing that kind of thing, maybe. You have to stick your face quite close to it. But yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. So how have I found using this thing, being a handheld switch man? Yeah, it's nice. Basically, this D-pad has made a hell of a difference for me. I do have a problem, though. So people have been saying, oh, this is uh, sort of more comfortable to hold. It's a bit smaller than that. For me, if you, well, I'll show you, actually. You see how the uh, D-pad is has slightly less... Um, sort of plastic and area below it than the buttons did on the original Switch. That's a bit of a problem for me, because I've got quite big hands for strangling badgers, and um, this kind of, after a while, yeah, I, I feel like I need something further down in my hand. If not, it starts getting a little bit uncomfortable. Oh no, the Switch has fallen. That's the end of that then. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's an obvious choice. If you want to buy a Switch, and you're only going to use it handheld, then obviously get this one. If not, you obviously have to get the other one. <laughs> it really isn't much of a choice. Although, eh, there is the factor of money to bring into it, isn't it? I mean, this is, uh, what, uh, 200 quid? Whereas the Switch is generally about 280, so about 80 quid cheaper or whatever. Yeah, that's been quite good, isn't it? But shop around, you can get the Switch for about 250 easy, and I have seen them, like mint condition refurbished, for about £150, which is 50 quid less than this. So, I mean, you could get the sort of full experience for 50 quid less if you're prepared to shop around a bit and get a good second-hand one. So, you know, the choice is yours, really. That's the only way any choice comes into it. But hey, there we go. And here's something I want to tell you, because it's really bugged me. Don't buy one of these cases for it. I bought a case from the company Orsley or whatever. It's a really nice, uh, well-made case, really sensible and all that sort of stuff. It's twice as tall as it needs to be. Look, you put the switch in it, and it's, it's just got all this totally useless space. You could fit two of the bloody things in it. Look, here's the case I've got for the uh, normal switch. Look at the difference in bloody height. Absolutely ridiculous. So I was thinking, oh, well, it'll take up slightly less room in the bag when I'm travelling, I suppose. Not that much in it. No, it takes up more because it's stupidly wide. I'm probably going to buy another one and then use this for, I don't know, external hard drives or something, of which I have 40 million because I work in video, obviously. Anyway, that, my friends, be the Nintendo Switch Lite. What an experience it has been to play pretty much exactly the same games I've been playing in exactly the same way. Let me recommend a Switch game for you. Blasphemous. Weird platformer. Sort of based around s classic Spanish Catholic imagery and I do that. I don't know. It's, it's very odd. But it's a very good game and I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Right, I'm going now. Bye. But wait! Extra thing I forgot to mention. So, you know, you get the old power adapter with it. And it's still got that weird thing that has a USB-C plug in it, but isn't really quite USB-C, so it doesn't always charge from USB-C sources. And frankly, can be potentially dangerous if you try and plug uh, other non-Switch items into this. So be careful out there, guys. Always charge your Switch from a reputable power source. Subscribe for more.